Ben Pierce and the Roaster Tracker here, and today I'd like to talk to you about the launch of the Falcon Heavy, the Arabsat 6A, that happened a little over a month ago. Now, there was a lot of people questioning why this was done on a Falcon Heavy. In particular, Scott Manley had this to say. Also, being the rocket nerd, I do want to point out that there's no need to actually put this satellite on a Falcon Heavy. It's more that this was put on a Falcon Heavy because when the contract was negotiated back in 2015, this was the option that SpaceX had. But in the meantime, you know, SpaceX have developed better and more powerful rockets and they've actually launched heavier satellites into geostationary transfer orbit and recovered the booster. Now, First of all, let me say, I have enormous respect for Scott Manley. He is incredibly accurate, normally does some really, really good stuff, but this actually isn't quite true. It's at least a little bit true. Well, indeed, it turns out that Arabsat 6A could have launched on a Falcon 9 to a GTO orbit, but there are a lot of different kinds of GTO orbits, and I want to explain a little bit about the particular orbit that it entered and why they might have chose to use a Falcon Heavy instead of a Falcon 9. See, the biggest thing to me that tells me that they needed to use a Falcon Heavy for the orbit is the fact that the center core landed way, way further down than any booster has landed before. So they must have been using a lot of power in order to get it that far. And so... There had to be something up with this, so let's take a look at this. Now, this program that I'm running is called the Satellite Toolkit, Systems Toolkit now, STK, by a company called AGI. It's kind of the gold standard for satellite orbits. You can kind of think of it like a Kerbal Space Program for professionals. So we're going to take a little look at this. This is the Arabsat 6A satellite, this little dot here. This is the day of launch, about when it had a stable orbit, which was, you know, half an hour or so after launch. And you can see it's going out all the way out this far. And we'll compare this to some of the other satellites that were of similar mass that were launched. So we're going to go ahead and hit play and see what happens here. Now, you can see at first the satellite was just kind of establishing its normal communication. The ground teams were trying to figure out where it was, make sure that everything was happy. And so we're not going to see a lot interesting that happened for a little while, but let's increase the speed of this a little bit. Let's see if we can see when the orbit actually starts to change. Now this is the second orbit. It looks like they did a slight rays of the periapsis, but nothing too significant. Now, the third orbit, they actually started to increase the periapsis a fair bit, but it's still more or less the same if we play with this a little bit. You can still see that it's not really quite equatorial. It looks like they fixed the inclination a little bit too, but uh, they're starting to get into the correct spot. Now, as the orbit continues, it's going to start to shrink its eccentricity even more. So we'll probably see some of that here with this next orbit. And it's continuing to adjust. Now, you want to get the eccentricity figured out while it's really high up here. And so now that they have the eccentricity more or less figured out, it's going to start to raise the periapsis a little bit, which you can see it looks like they did something here. This is a discontinuity in the tracking data. I'm actually pulling the tracking data from an organization called JSPOC. So there's something significant that happened, but that's okay. It's kind of normal to see this. You can see it's been raising its periapsis bit by bit. And it should raise it even more this time. And eventually they're going to get it exactly into the right slot. So let's go ahead and increase the speed a little bit more. You can see that it's continuing to have some of these discontinuities, which are okay. But eventually, it gets into a nice settled orbit, and if we go and zoom in on this guy, you can see, actually let's do this. 
and you can see that it's kind of right over the Middle East. It's called ArabSat, so we kind of expect that. So this is a pretty good indicator that it's working as expected, and it took a reasonably short period of time. Let's go back and figure out exactly when this was. So it reached the final orbit after about 20 days or so after launch. Yeah, it looks pretty close. So let's compare that with some other interesting objects here. This is Telstar launch. This is actually the heaviest payload that SpaceX has ever put into geostationary orbit. It's actually the heaviest single payload ever put into geostationary transfer orbit. There's a couple of things though that are different. First of all, you'll notice it doesn't go out nearly as far as ArabSat 6A did. The fact that it went out further will allow it to use a considerable less amount of fuel in order to do things, in order to get it into its final trajectory. You also notice that the inclination is quite a bit higher. Uh, this is roughly the equatorial. It doesn't have any of it taken out. Let's go ahead and take a look and see how this goes. Now, as was common before, the orbit will update once every time. There are a lot of different things you can do with this, but we'll just go ahead and show the trajectory updating once every orbit. You can see it had its standard kind of break-in period where it was trying to contact the satellite and make sure everything was well. And it's much, much slower than the ArabSat was to make any maneuvers. You can see that it's starting to increase its orbit a little bit, but it really hasn't done very much in the first several days after launch. Now this is where it starts to do some interesting stuff. So I'm going to slow down the time step a little bit. Let's go ahead and walk through here. This is about four days after launch. We can see that they've done a little bit of a maneuver here, but there's far more significant maneuver here. You can see that it raised the periapsis a little bit, extending the time of orbit, and now there's another large discontinuity because they did something very significantly different. But it's still very similar here. Let's look at the top down perspective. You can still see that it's pretty close to Earth at its closest approach. Presumably what they're trying to do here is Get rid of the inclination. Let me see if I can get this view a little bit. There, that's closer. They're slowly getting rid of the inclination here. But it's still very, very slow. You can see another large maneuver must have happened here. And it's starting to raise the periapsis. The Inclination at this point in time has almost been entirely canceled out, although still not completely, interestingly enough. They must have raised the periapsis enough to keep it from dipping down in the atmosphere. Now let me go ahead and pause this for a sec. Now we're starting to see some serious raising of the periapsis. They fixed the inclination at long last. And so they were able to start doing the more major maneuvers here. There you go. You can see now it's roughly equatorial. Though it looks like it's a little bit off still. And they're continuing to raise the orbit. We'll zoom out a little bit. There's another jump because the position was way off the predicted path. And now it's looking like it's pretty close to its final orbit. And let's take a look and see where it is. It's over South America as it should be. Okay. So this is how you can see how these satellites get into their final trajectory. Notice here it took until August 2nd, August 1st roughly. So it was a actually a fair bit quicker. It was only about 10 days compared to the 20. 
but the amount of fuel that they must have used was considerably more because it was in a less than optimal orbit. So while it is technically true that Arabsat 6A could have launched into the orbit without the use of Falcon Heavy, Falcon Heavy put it much, much closer to its final trajectory, and as such it was able to save quite a bit of fuel. I just wanted to end this by showing both of them at approximately the same time. This is as close as I could get it. You can see the differences here. This further out orbit specifically is called a supersynchronous orbit. It's a fairly common term to save the fuel. So let's go ahead and hit play. And you can see just how much further the Arabsat was sent out. It really made heavy use out of the Falcon Heavy and probably saved a considerable amount of fuel, which will extend its lifetime considerably. That's one of the limiting factors for a geostationary orbit satellite. Anyways, thank you guys much for joining me. Let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have. And until next time, keep on tracking. Take care.